Hey, how y'all doing? It's Big John back with it's All in the Game. Um, just been thinking a little bit about this COVID-19 and how it affects all my brothers and sisters who are incarcerated. So uh, this big building you can see behind me, that is the old Orleans Parish Prison, the old OPP. It's closed now. Uh, the current one, you can see behind me right there, that is the current OPP, okay? So the reason I've been thinking about this, you know, obviously, anybody locked up anywhere in a situation like this where we have a pandemic, something that's turning into an epidemic is going to be highly susceptible to, you know, this contagion. They're going to be at a much higher risk of becoming infected with this virus, especially something like COVID-19 that is very contagious and it's something that you don't see the effects of. You don't feel the effects of for a couple weeks. So somebody might come in and not know they were sick and they might put them out in general population and they would be around a whole bunch of other people which they would you know then expose the virus to and that's something that you know it's not that's not you know too too big of a surprise everybody's probably going to be aware of that but what's concerning me and what people might not be aware of so i don't know about the old opp but this one behind me the new one certainly has what is called a negative pressure cell, or probably several, several of them, probably dozens of negative pressure cells. And what negative pressure cells are cells that you put somebody in who has a contagious disease, so that, or an airborne contagious disease, so that their, uh, you know, whatever they're they're carrying won't be spread to the rest of the inmates. Because an institution like that, those people in there are not breathing fresh air like you and I breathe every day and like people in most penitentiaries breathe every day. In prison you have much more uh, ability to go inside and outside and stuff like that. In prison or in jail rather, you're pretty much locked inside all day every day. You know, some jails give you a little bit of yard time, some might have a little room where you can breathe some fresh air. But for the most part, when you're in a county jail, you are breathing air that's circulated through the whole facility, okay? So they're not breathing fresh air. And what, what the result is, if somebody comes in there with an airborne disease or an airborne virus, it's going to get passed through that whole system. So if somebody comes into it, it doesn't mean it's just going to, somebody comes in with that virus, it's not just the people that are going to be in their housing unit or in their cell that are going to be exposed it's going to be passed through the entire ventilation system and passed to everybody in that whole facility. That's why they have these negative pressure cells. So, you know, anytime you go into jail or prison, they're going to test you for tuberculosis. Should you, you know, show up with a positive PD, uh, uh, TB test, they're going to put you in a negative pressure cell. But with something like COVID-19, there's no way of knowing that you have this until you start showing symptoms and you don't start showing symptoms until a couple weeks after you're exposed and then it takes quite a while to get the test back so if somebody comes in there with that it's going to get spread to the whole compound throughout that whole facility and that's just a catastrophe waiting to happen so you know they're talking about letting some people out that have like uh, you know low cash bonds or people in there for nonviolent crimes. But how do y'all think that people should? How do how do y'all think that we as a society should be dealing with this? Especially people with cash bonds. People in there that have not been convicted of a crime yet. They're in there. They have a bond that they can't afford to pay, but they're not technically guilty of a crime yet, and they're being locked in there and potentially being exposed to this virus, right? Or people, somebody goes in there, you know, comes in for drunk driving, maybe for unpaid tickets, or for, you know, any number of things that aren't necessarily, you know, they're more or less victimless crimes. Somebody goes in there for having a little bit of dope because they're a drug user. Should those people be exposed potentially to this, this virus, you know, and potentially, you know, take that out with them because maybe they got a short sentence and they're going to go home in you know two weeks maybe they come in get exposed to it and then they go take it home and expose it to their people so like how do you think that the criminal justice system should be dealing with this with this virus i'd love to hear your all thoughts and comments uh, please leave them in the comments below as always please like and uh, subscribe to the channel because i really want to start putting more content out there and i'd love to hear what y'all have to say thank you